Hey, what's going on everyone? Thank you for tuning in and checking out my latest video. Now today's video is going to be talking about a, a matchup that I cannot wait to watch between Danny Swift Garcia versus Showtime Sean Porter taking place in Brooklyn, New York. 50-50 matchup. Should be an action-packed fight in my opinion. Um, we got two trainers who are great speakers as well and they give a lot of great uh, press releases and kind of sound bites. So it's going to be great leading up to this fight. I've already seen some of the kind of press conferences and they've been going back and forth, questioning each other's skills and things like that. So it's going to be a fun buildup and a fun fight in my opinion. So in this video, guys, what I aim to do is I'm going to talk about both of these fighters' skills, ultimately pick a winner in this fight, and give you some key things to look out for in this matchup in my opinion. Now, looking at this fight, let's first start off with Danny Garcia and what he brings to the table in this matchup. Now, looking at Danny Garcia, his best vintage punch, I would say, in my opinion, his knockout left hook, the no-look left hook, he puts people to sleep with that shot, usually in the center of the ring. Garcia also has some underrated counter-punching skills. Um, he does work the body at times. He's not a huge body puncher. It's more so to keep fighters honest and kind of mix up his offense. So that is something that he does well. You'll see him occasionally use his job as well to defend um, aggressive fighters like a guy like Brandon Rios, for example. Underrated straight right hand. And Garcia has a dynamite chin. He has, I've seen him take some bombs from Lucas Matisse, a prime Lucas Matisse, and also Keith Thurman and not even wobble or be hurt at all. So world-class chin also Danny Garcia has. And that's going to be very key for him in this matchup against an aggressive Showtime Sean Porter. Now, looking at Sean Porter, what he brings to the table in this fight. So, Sean Porter, of course, has that athletic background. He brings some good foot speed. Physically very strong. Aggressive style. He likes to maul his opponents, get on the inside, kind of smother his own work, which is a negative at times. And he ultimately likes to unleash a lot of body shots. He'll mix you up uh, with some shots upstairs. He'll also occasionally use a jab uh, to track you down. You'll see him throw some uppercuts at times. Uh, leaping left hook. So he does mix up his variety of shots every now and again. Um, he's non-stop this guy. Constantly working on the clinches, things like this. He's extremely difficult to deal with because he'll hit you with his head. He'll hit you low. Um, very tough style to deal with in this matchup. And I ultimately think uh, another key thing for this matchup is depending on who the referee is as well, that plays a factor on Sean Porter's style in my opinion. Now, looking at this fight, guys, let's talk about some advantages that both these fighters have over one another. When we look at Danny Garcia and some of the advantages that he has in this fight, in my opinion, I think that Garcia is the bigger puncher of the two fighters. I see a lot of knockouts. Um, Danny Garcia has a one-punch power, whereas Sean Porter more so wears out his opponents. Um, I wouldn't say he's a one-punch knockout artist. And then also, I think Danny Garcia has a better chin of the two fighters. Of course, we've seen Porter hurt versus Thurman multiple times. And then we also saw Sean Porter drop by Adrian Broner. I also believe that Danny Garcia is a better counterpuncher of the two fighters. And I also believe he's technically better boxing IQ. What I mean by that is I think that he gets more leverage on his punches. He also knows how to control distance better. Um, he doesn't smother his own work. I think just his IQ is better and he's fundamentally more sound. Sean Porter is a lot more wild, in my opinion, than Danny Garcia is looking at him as a fighter. Now, some advantages that Sean Porter has over Danny Garcia are the following. I believe he's physically stronger than Danny Garcia. I also believe he has a stamina advantage, work rate as well. Uh, his speed, hand speed, and foot speed are better. And I would say his footwork also is better than Danny Garcia, in my opinion. Um, just speaking about Sean Porter. Also, I would say he's a better inside fighter slash body puncher than Danny Garcia as well. So some keys to this matchup that I'm going to be looking for in this fight. I'm interested to see how Danny Garcia is going to slow down the attack of Sean Porter because if you watch Danny Garcia fight, generally speaking, he doesn't hold and clinch a lot defensively. He's more so a guy who likes to work off his jab. He'll land some body blows, occasionally hit you low as well like he did against Lucas Matisse. Um, what Sean Porter does all the time, so that should be interesting. Um, because Sean Porter, of course, has a dirty, aggressive style. Now, that's my key thing in this matchup is how is Danny Garcia gonna gain that respect through Sean Porter? Is it gonna be body shots? Um, is it gonna be that left hook? Is it gonna be able to time Sean Porter coming in? 
These are all key things that I'm looking for in this matchup. And ultimately, for Sean Porter, I think the key for him in this fight is the way he closes the distance, he's got to do so effectively. He's got to be changing angles consistently. And is he able to consistently get into Danny Garcia or does he get counterpunched, causing him to have delayed offensive reactions? So those are some of the keys, I think, in my opinion, in this fight. And also, for Danny Garcia, he's got to have the space to throw that left hook. Is Sean Porter going to allow him the distance to do that? Or is it going to be his face too much? And will Danny Garcia get frustrated fighting a guy like Sean Porter who has this bully style, um, dirty style, and he's faster than Danny Garcia? And I don't really think Garcia has fought a guy similar like that in quite a long time. So that's going to be an interesting kind of dynamic to look at for this fight, in my opinion. Now, ultimately, picking a winner in this fight, I look at a couple different things. So when I look at Danny Garcia, he's a superior boxer in this fight. However, at times Danny Garcia takes rounds off, and I think that Sean Porter is going to have stamina throughout this whole fight. I think that Sean Porter is going to be able to outwork Danny Garcia. And another key thing why I'm picking Sean Porter in this fight, in my opinion, is Danny Garcia doesn't have the best footwork. He's kind of a plotter who will stay there. And he doesn't hold and clinch. And against a guy like Porter, defensively, I think it's going to be a little overwhelming for him at times. And I think that Porter just simply is going to outwork him. I think that Garcia will land some pretty good shots as well. And I ultimately think Danny Garcia is going to come on very strong at the end, but it might be too late at that point. So I'm going to take Sean Porter in this matchup because I think that ultimately he's going to control and implement his game plan better. He's going to have Garcia up against the ropes or in the corner. And it's going to be his style of fight um, and ultimately break down Danny Garcia and score some points that way. However, you cannot sleep on Danny Garcia because he has that left hook. And like I said, if he can control the center of the ring or has a game plan or is effectively challenging Sean Porter when Sean Porter is trying to come in, Danny Garcia will dominate this fight and potentially even stop uh, Sean Porter if he's able to figure out Sean's style and keep him away from him. Um, because Danny Garcia is a superior boxer and can fight very well in the center of the ring at times. Whereas Porter, I would say, doesn't have as good of a defense as a guy like Danny Garcia, in my opinion, and is more, I would say, one-dimensional looking at these two fighters. But ultimately, guys, I think that I've been watching film on Porter as well. I think he's a little bit, his hand speed's improved, and I also noticed that Kenny Porter is trying to get him to always have his head at different angles when he uh, closes a distance to give a lot of different looks because I find that sometimes it just comes straight in or even at times he'll be off balance and way too wild. And I think that's something that generally they're trying to correct or at least improve against a vicious counter puncher like Danny Garcia. So ultimately, guys, I got like a 115-113 style fight. Victory for Sean Porter, in my opinion. I think there'll be some controversy on this fight, in my opinion. Honestly, I really do. Let me know what you guys think on this fight. Extremely tough to call a true 50-50 matchup. Usually I never go against a technical boxer who is superior in that aspect. Let's see if it bites me on this fight or not. Let me know what you guys think. Would love to hear your opinions on this fight, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in and checking out my channel once again. Thank you.